have that before we forget it. Well, they can uh, reach me at my office. It's the Back to Health Wellness Center, and our phone number is 970-257-9199. Okay, so that's great. And let's change directions a little bit. And um, tell me how um, you would define health in terms of cell function. It's important to realize that your overall health breaks down to the actual functioning of each and every cell in your body. So to have 100% function, all your cells have to be functioning at 100%. So when you're dead, your cells are functioning at 0%. In optimal health, your cells would be functioning at 100% and also in a state of homeostasis or balance. Okay, so if we use that definition, and that's quite the gamut, 0% to 100%, and I'm sure a lot of people are in the middle of that and to varying degrees, but if we use that definition, what causes sickness and disease then? So it all breaks down to how you eat, move, and think, like I said earlier. And if you don't eat, move, and think optimally, you have different stressors that your body is exposed to. And if these stressors exceed your body's ability to adapt, then they form either a toxicity or a deficiency in the body. So your cells aren't getting what they're supposed to or they're being supplied with a uh, toxicity and they become unhealthy. And people typically think of something that's toxic to the body or just chemicals. However, you have to realize that um, other toxicities can involve either negative thoughts, um, which can affect the nervous system, which can affect the health of the cells, or they can uh, come from a physical means um, from something called a vertebral subluxation, which is an improper functioning in the joints. See, our genes are programmed for health, and it's a toxicity or deficiency that affects the gene expression that leads to sickness. It's not actually faulty genetics. Uh, genetics are just a blueprint, but it's how um, these genes are expressed is what leads to either health or sickness. And our genes, you must realize, don't differ from our hunter-gatherer, pre-agricultural, pre-industrial ancestors. Um, our ancestors and surviving tribes that modeled their lifestyles did not die from disease of lifestyle like heart disease and hypertension and cancer and diabetes and stroke. They either died from trauma or an infections. So the only difference between our healthy ancestors and our sick society is just toxicity or deficiency. The genes have remained the same. Modern illnesses are due to these environmental factors and not genetic ones. So because of that, you have to realize that modern illness is avoidable. It's not inevitable. And a healthy lifestyle is attainable with proper measures. You said when you started, and I'm going to really ask you to get into this a little bit because some of our audience may not be familiar with this term, and, I, I, and of course, for you and I, you know, it's, it's sort of like what we live with every day and really what the, the, the gist of our direction always is. But tell the audience, what is a vertebral subluxation since you brought it up? Well, the technical definition of a vertebral subluxation is an abnormal physical relationship between adjacent anatomic structures of the spine, and it consists of biochemical and neurological components which elicit neurological responses that can lead to an increase in negative nervous system input, which will ultimately decrease your overall health. Okay, that sounded, that was quite the definition there. Just (laughs) simplify it a little bit for our audience, you know, because I really want them to understand this concept. So just really as simple a terms as you can can make it. Okay. 
Well, if you have a, a negative stress, whether it's physical, chemical, or emotional, your body can respond through your nervous system by, let's say, increasing muscle tension. And that muscle tension around the joints will cause the joints not to move or function properly. And when you have a lack of movement or functioning in a joint, it can lead to this vertebral subluxation, and it can cause a cascade of neurological effects that, that decrease your overall health. But in simplistic terms, it's just um, abnormal nervous system functioning that typically takes place around joints, in particular the spine. And how does that manifest itself? In other words, do people know they have vertebral subluxations or really um, they just know there's something not right and then you can, using all your, you know, the high-tech equipment that you, you specialize in in your office, really be able to tell them that, you know, they come in for a symptom, whatever, but then you're able to really document for them really what the cause is and if it's a vertebral subluxation or not. Well, in fact, the only way... Um, to find vertebral subluxation is if you're trained in knowing what to look for. Uh, the vast majority of subluxations are on a subconscious level. And so like I said, they can result from negative stress, physical, chemical, or emotional, which causes a decreased joint motion. And this decreased joint motion can actually immediately begin to form scar tissue, which further decreases joint motion. And they've also found that within two weeks of this, uh, there can be radiographic evidence showing joint space narrowing, bone formation, degeneration, and this results in uh, the subluxation consequences of nervous system dysfunction, which increases negative input and uh, decreases the positive input, which comes from joint motion. So this increased negative input results in an increased stress response in the body, and that can uh, cause related adaptation and disease susceptibility, of, or very often the absence of conscious pain or symptoms. And also, they, they found that uh, this improper function um, can lead to a decrease in cognition or thought processes, uh, emotional problems, visceral and immune function problems. Well, this is really, this is great stuff. And so, you know, I think probably our audience right now is sitting there saying to themselves, is this something that you find in in older people only, young people? I mean, really, what's the, the gamut of the person that comes to your office to seek your help? Well, subluxations can incur um, right from birth. Birth trauma is a very common initial cause of subluxations, and it can happen anywhere through life up till the day you die. Um, so it's very important to have your nervous system checked by a qualified person to see whether you have these uh, right from the day you're born. And if if you don't, even better, then you can just go through the processes of keeping your health uh, up to par or optimal. But it's much, much easier to, like I like to say to my patients, uh, grow a healthy body than it is to try and fix one, someone once they've already come down with a disease or condition. Well, I think what you just nailed it right on the head, and I think that was, I think it's it's worth repeating because I think what you just said, and I'm going to ask you to say it again, and, that you do, and what you tell your patients is really what I think our audience really needs to understand. So, you know, feel free to, I'd like you to say it again if you don't mind. So it's easier to grow a healthy person right from the start than it is to try and fix someone once they've already become sick. Really a fantastic concept and, and one that I really want our audience to digest because I really think that Dr.